guys, Rev to Rev Vine here. Hope you guys are doing well. Thought it was about time I do another vlog. I had a couple things I wanted to talk about today. Uh, first one being wearing the proper gear for the ride you're going on. Now I know I've talked about you know the importance of gears and uh, the importance of gear and other vlogs that I've done, but I had a situation happen where I just had to stress it one more time. So as most of you guys know, I one of my favorite spots to ride is Palomar Mountain. Uh, it's a really fun, twisty, dangerous place. Uh, it has extremely sharp uh, corners, uh, but it's extremely exciting. And I've been going up there quite a bit. So about two weeks ago, on a Thursday, I was going up there and I was going to bring a buddy of mine who's not really new to riding, but he's very new to uh, twisties. And, you know, I told him, yeah, you know, let's cruise up there on a Thursday. It's not going to be busy and just make sure you wear all your gear and it's good practice for him. So he brought a friend with him. And I told him, yeah, that's fine if you want to bring a friend, just make sure he also wears as much gear as possible. So, hey, I got an M3 in front of me. I wonder if he wants to play. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what this M3 has. Now, here we go. Kind of like I was saying, riding a sports car, slow. Why do you do it? So let's see right here. Let's see if he does it. And he did it. So, uh, yeah, and I also shifted into neutral, so I kind of look like the douchebag there. But anyways, back to my vlog. Um, so, you know, I told his buddy, hey, just tell him to wear as much gear as he possibly has. And the guy shows up and he has no gear on whatsoever and here's a picture of him and you know he's a cool guy just he even himself admitted that he's stubborn and he, he just felt he didn't need gear so anyways we were riding here's a little bit of a tight squeeze um, we were riding and he was actually he was a fast rider and and he's keeping up with me and you know we are following each other up and down Palomar Now keep in mind, I've got full leathers on. I have the, the, the full setup, uh, you know, racing boots, uh, Alpine Stars jacket, leather pants, and he had pretty much khaki pants on and like a t-shirt and boots jacket. But anyways, towards the end of the day, he ends up going up and taking one of the corners. He hits it too fast and he low sides. And he got some pretty gnarly road rash on his arm and uh, messed up his bike. But I will say he, he rides an R6 and those R6s, I don't know if it's just a uh, luck or what, but uh, that thing held up really well. It had very minor damage done to it for how hard he wrecked, so. But anyways, he was extremely frustrated and and uh, didn't know what he's gonna do and pretty much ruined his whole day. But he did learn a pretty strong lesson from it. And uh, you know, he even admitted that he was stubborn not to wear the proper gear. And with the road rash on the side of his arm, that was kind of proof in and of itself. He also had some road rash on his knee. Uh, but something that I noticed that I've seen a lot of riders do when they wreck is the first thing they say is, dude, my bike, oh man, I, you know, my bike's ruined and their biggest concern is their bike. Which don't get me wrong, that sucks, but you got your life. Who gives a shit about your bike? You lived through this one. And that brings me on, on to my next little story I want to tell you. Uh, Last Saturday, up on Palomar Mountain, there was another death, and when I heard about it, 
I hope this doesn't sound wrong, but I was hoping the guy who died was somebody who had no experience, you know, being a squid and, and driving like a, uh, an idiot. And that's kind of the reason for his death because that would make me feel a little bit better about riding considering I don't ride like that. And unfortunately, he was actually a motorcycle safety instructor. He was my age, he was 35. Nice Saturday, just up there making some runs on Palomar. Nobody really knows what happened, but he ended up low siding on uh, kind of like a bend on Palomar. So, uh, and he low sided and he ended up low siding into the opposite lane and he slid into an oncoming truck. The truck was only going about 20 miles an hour and he still died. As far as I know, he is dead on impact. And that whole thing really tripped me out because one, he's my age and two, guy was definitely an experienced rider considering he's a motorcycle safety instructor. So it uh, kind of creeped me out and I went back, I went up there on last Sunday and this day after he died and, and I honestly rode like absolute crap because I was just, uh, you know, pretty sketched out on, on how easy, and it's kind of a slap in the face of reality of how easy it is to die. Uh, riding a bike. Now, don't get me wrong, I know I'm putting myself into an even da more dangerous situation riding on Palomar. And, you know, that's that's something that I've, you know, I'm willing to accept because it is so much fun. But it also just really made me realize how dangerous it really is going up there. Um, Weekends especially are the most dangerous because you got some really good riders up there who can really haul ass. And uh, but yeah, so rest in peace to the guy. Really sad news. Um, but you know, sometimes I think things like this happen to kind of put you in check, and you know, kind of shows you you know a sad reminder of how dangerous it really is riding. So I don't know about you guys, but. Ever since I started riding a bike, and I'm talking about a motorcycle, not a bicycle, uh, I've become a complete blinker Nazi. So if I see somebody not using their blinker, I'll have a little uh, rush of road rage. And I think the reason why is because as a rider, you realize how important uh, using your blinker is and, and uh, how awesome the guy who invented it is. But yeah, so I mean, if I see somebody not using their blinker and there's not even anybody in their area, I still get pissed. This is really sharp yellow light, but you guys know what I say, do not run yellow lights in a motorcycle. I practice what I preach. But yeah, so even if I see somebody not using a blinker and there's nobody around, I still get pissed because it's something that you should just have subconsciously implanted into your head to, if you're turning, use a blinker. It's not like it takes a lot out of you. It's a pretty basic thing. You, you know, you're clicking a lever up or down. I don't see why that is so hard. But yeah, that was just something I was realizing that ever since I rode a, ever since I started riding a motorcycle, I'm uh, really keen on making sure people use their blinkers and I will let them know that they need to do it and the way I let them know is sometimes by flipping them off or getting really upset. Now I know that's probably not the right way to go about doing it, but it's just the frustration I have that makes me uh, want to stress to other cagers how important it is to use a blinker. I, just last week I was on my way up to work and I'm in my car on my way up to work and this lady's in front of me and she just starts merging over into my lane no blinker starts pushing me out of my lane so I drive up to the side of her and she was also on her cell phone which even pissed me off even more I had a 
few choice words with her, just expressing how pissed off it made me and how important it is for her to watch the road and uh, get off her phone and be aware of what she's doing. So anyways, that was my little vent uh, about me becoming a blinker Nazi ever since I started riding a motorcycle. So yeah, anyways, that's uh, my moto vlog. I'm not sure how long that is, but uh, hopefully it's, it's a couple minutes. And I guess I'm going to end it here, so till next time.